Welcome back, Blade fans. An itty bitty and unusual one I've been waiting for today dropped by my place yesterday from Kaiser. Yes, there is a lanyard. So we've got some capability for neck carry here. We got a nice, discreet Kydex sheath. What could it be? How about the variable? The variable what, you might ask? The variable Warncliffe. Takes its place alongside the variable Broadhead, a design by Dirk Pinkerton as well. Here we have a neck knife and defensive carry knife. One could call it, as Tim Kell has coined, the get off me knife. Just enough to get somebody off you in a pinch and do a little more than pinch them, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, we've got this sizable hole in the center and a number of different positions to hold it in. I'm going to put the sheath to the side for the moment and we'll get back to that. Hence the name variable. Yes, it's in D2. Probably the only downside for me, since this is a knife that's probably going to be worn close to the body. Invariably, haha, I get it. Invariably in warm, moist climates, or at least close to the body that's sweating, perhaps. And D2 may not be the optimal steel because it's only about 50% stain resistant. It's not completely non-stainless. It's not completely stainless. It's not like a 0201 uh, tool steel or 1095. It's got some more stain resistance than that. But still, I think we would have been better served here if Kaiser could have gone 14C, could have gone even maybe 154, um, even uh, N3, N690, whatever. That's my only gripe is the uh, steel they used, but it kept the price below 40 bucks. So they're not very expensive. This came from the Knife Center and I waited a bit for it, a good 10 days or so. And I uh, gave them a call and they said, yeah, um, they'll be shipping tomorrow. So cool. So you might ask, well, where is the handle <laughs> on this guy? Somebody cut the handle off. Well, no, it's supposed to be low profile, discreet carry, carry it anywhere, minimal size, but you do get maximum solid use out of it. This is a solid grip. I'm telling you, that little nub right in there and my middle finger, I can hold on to this and almost do push-ups with it. That's how strong it feels in my hand. But being a variable worn cliff, why not use it like a push dagger. Sure, you can do that too. Just use the middle finger through there. Why not use it like a pakal knife? Pikal. Definitely could use it that way. Why not use it like a karambit? Definitely. You can use it like a karambit. So in my book, that's those are the variances. Uh, you could probably pinch it here. Um, you could grab it here, put the finger out here, and quite nice for some utility cuts, for sure. Got a beautiful Warncliffe point there. It's quite sharp. I did a little bit of uh, post-purchase um, stropping, and uh, it's much sharper even now. Um, but they do give you a pretty good secondary bevel there. It's a flat high grind. I'd say, well... 50% at least, maybe a little better than that. Got some nice effective jimping here. And if you're wondering just how big it is, well, not two. How about four and three quarter inches overall length? And we won't talk about the blade length. We'll talk about the cutting edge, which is just shy of two and a half inches. And if we're talking about thicknesses in millimeters 
the blade stock is only two and a half millimeters, which works out to 0.10 inches. And a handle thick enough, 0.46 inches, and a minuscule weight. Wait until you see the weight. How about an ounce, 0.8, 1.8 ounces. With the sheath, well, we're cheating a little bit because we'll weigh it with the uh, lanyard on it. Just wrap that around. With the sheath, 2.7 ounces. Still feather, feather weight. Yeah, it comes with the uh, paracord. I decided to just... Uh, Put it through for the demo so you can see it. Um, nothing to it, just tie a square knot in the end. Although I'll probably have to glue that or something. It uh, tends to want to come loose or I'll use a different knot. But, yep, you can hang that around the neck and just snap it out. You could also put a static cord around the belt and drop this in the pocket and comes right out. Or you could forget the paracord altogether and very easily thumb it off very easily the thing i noticed with this is pay some attention to knowing it's not a tanto <laughs> it's a worn cliff so you know which side the edge is on i already made a mistake didn't cut myself but i saw the potential for doing so when it's in the sheath it looks fairly ambidextrous and uh, doesn't always see in the way I want it to. Something interesting going on with that. Um, I mean, it's not a bad sheath setup. I just think it could be a little more snappy, if you will. Let's try it again. There it goes. Clicked in place that time. And then, see, sometimes it'll go in a little deep like that, and you just pull it back. That's its resting place. It likes it there, and there is no rattle, none whatsoever. So how does it stack up against uh, blades like another Pinkerton design? The Main Street by Concept, very similar blade shape. How about another minuscule knife that's in a completely different design, a claw design, but about the same size and weight. This is the Vestex Strelit, designed by All Stop Hell. And it's another knife that I feel is a really interesting last ditch knife, kind of a push dagger talon sort of an affair. Looks pretty, but it bites real nice. And you can see when we're talking minimalism here, even closed, well, even closed, closed we got about the same size knife as the, uh, as the variable Warncliffe. I almost forgot the name already, see? So I'm liking this concept. Um, been very curious since I saw Dirk's uh, custom designs of this, uh, photographs only. Um, they give you a nice uh, green-black micarta. Not G10, but micarta. So it's kind of a classy appointment there. Um, no jimping other than where you really need it, where the thumb goes. And it is very effective jimping. And again, uh, if you're wondering how to hold it, I would say this is... Um, your number one hold right here. Uh, when you're pulling it out of the sheath, you can pull it out with a middle finger and have that push dagger. Sits right into the palm, will not go anywhere. You can push and it is pretty solid in there. And then if you wanna get fancy and you have time, you can put the pinky through and you can go picot or switch it around and go karambit. But obviously, a very small and very handy knife, with or without the neck carry. Fits in there nice. They did a pretty decent job with the uh, sheath. It, whoop, except I can't hold on to it. Again, it is not going anywhere. So you wear it around your neck. 
I feel you should feel secure with it around the neck. Personally, I'm not a neck knife uh, kind of a guy. I like uh, pocket and belt carry. So you could take the sheath. You could put some DCC clips on it. You could put an ulti clip on it, what have you. You could drop it in the pocket. I think it will make a great pocket carry. The nice thing is they gave you a wide enough sheath so it's not going to spin around in the pocket. And that does happen with knives that you put in the pocket. So uh, if you don't like wide sheaths, give this one an exception because there is a purpose around it. If we put it up uh, next to a Benchmade Griptilian, that's what we got. And if we put it up against a Rat 1, yep, you guessed it. Much larger. Much. So there you have it. A variable Warncliff successor or companion piece to the variable broadhead. And what is the variable broadhead? It is a double edged one. And so far, I've only seen it as a Dirk Pinkerton custom. And I'll leave you a link to his website as well as his Instagram page, as well as Kaiser to see if uh, you can learn a little bit more. Hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the Kaiser Variable Warncliffe, a design by Dirk Pinkerton. Be well. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. I'll be back soon.